What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Beyond DRTV. My name is John, and it's time for another episode of the Dear John Q&A. Today, I'm looking at a viewer question that's not really a viewer question at all. On this series, you know that I like to take a detailed viewer question and then answer in video form if I think it needs some more explanation or I've got some more insight that I want to share. But today, I'm fielding more of a general question that I've been asked pretty much ever since I released any of my vinyl updates ever, but especially after I dropped my entire vinyl collection video over on the main channel. If you haven't seen that yet somehow, then please tap the card on screen here or else there's going to be a link at the end of the video to go check that out. But the question that I've been receiving, especially like not only in the comments there on YouTube, but also on my social media accounts, I'm at ARTV Reviews if you want to give me a follow on Twitter or Instagram, I pulled a few up and no hate to the people that gave these comments at all because it seems like genuine questions and I know that a lot of people are curious because maybe I haven't spoken about it or answered at length. But it also brought up some other things that I did want to talk about when it comes to collecting music. Why do you do it? Why do we have these records? Why do we have vinyl or CDs? I'll give my own personal insight as far as what I like to do and also what I think about those who collect it for the clout. That's right, people posting it up on the gram, flexing about their new limited edition vinyl copy that's translucent, colored, whatever it might be. They did it for the gram, they did it for the vine, if you will. And I think, me personally, my rule of thumb, as I've discussed before, is always that I only buy the records that I really like or else love. It's definitely a way that I like to support the artist. And collecting goes far beyond, for people in the music community, I would say, it goes far beyond vinyl. It's CDs, some people like tapes still, some people like to buy posters, limited edition lithographs, whatever it might be. Collecting is a beautiful thing. I love the collecting community, but it can also be very toxic because I think a lot of people like to just chomp down on others and say, well, you're not doing this properly. There's always gonna be those people in those communities that like to call out and point the finger and laugh and say, you're not holding that properly, you didn't store that correctly, you don't have that displayed right on your shelf, anything that they can call to mind, they will. So this video isn't meant to be a thinly veiled criticism of something else. It's more so gonna be honest thoughts, I think, on how I view these people. There's obviously times where I see these colored vinyl records hanging on a wall. People have clearly bought these albums and then they just take them out, put them in a sleeve, and then quite literally just like nail them to the wall to have some sort of backdrop or it looks cool in their room or whatever. I'm not for that. I really honestly think if you're gonna buy it and post it up on the gram and then keep it sitting on your shelf and occasionally play it, that's better than that. I feel like some people will just buy them for no other reason than, oh, well that looked pretty and I don't care about this band at all. Now I have this limited edition vinyl that somebody else that's actually a fan could have had, but now it's just gonna sit here. Me personally, like I said, I'm buying the records that I love, that I know, that I constantly would probably want to come back to and as far as how much I actually listen to my vinyl, it's a tough question because it varies week to week. I always like to break out a few every single week, and then I have my dedicated days where I'll just sit back, listen to some stuff that I've been meaning to revisit for quite some time, these albums that I've cherished, really enjoyed, or loved. And I think that vinyl listening for me is something that I really enjoy, and I like to buy an album on vinyl only if I really like it, because I like to listen from start to finish. Obviously, it's not easy to skip around if you've got a record. I mean, you can. It's not like it's that hard, but still. I like to just sit back and not think about it all that much. And with CDs, the reason why you see all of those in the backdrop as well, I've got my vinyl, but I also have the CDs. CDs for me are often a way of supporting the artist. I don't listen to CDs all that much. I do sometimes in my car. I will rip them to my computer. Yes, I still have a disc tray. It's because I like to have that high quality format, especially for certain records. I will rip them because CD quality is always really great. But I collect CDs and I do have them. I don't buy them that often anymore, but I've got them because it's a great way if I don't really love the album, maybe I didn't want to quite purchase it on vinyl, or maybe it wasn't available on vinyl, I can still support this band. I can say, you know, I wanted to show you, the artist, some love. So I've purchased this and now I do have it on display here for the world to see on my YouTube channel. It's not always about how often you listen to it. Are you a fake fan if you're not listening to your vinyl each and every night, bowing down to it and praying to your turntable? 
to me, it's more so, are you buying it because you genuinely do like this artist? Did you want it because it was just a pretty color that you thought would look cool? Maybe on an Instagram post. I know a lot of photographers like to do that. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that inherently. I think it's more so a problem for me. And when I get agitated at least a little bit, not super worked up, it's not a huge problem, but still it comes down to, oh, well, you just posted it and basically tossed it in the closet and threw it away. When somebody else who probably really would take advantage of that, play it often and really cherish it in their collection could have had it. But again, that's kind of a minor criticism. It's kind of petty possibly, and it doesn't really matter that much in the long run. Collecting music is an interesting thing. Let me know your experiences in the comment section down below. Have you run into communities that have kind of harassed you if you've maybe made a post on Reddit or you posted a tweet and then people came after you because, oh, you know, you aren't supposed to touch the quarter of the vinyl, which you probably shouldn't touch it all that much. But again, it's not gonna kill it if you touch it with your thumb in the corner of the picture one time. But still, have you run into problems with these communities or has it been chill for you? You really enjoy collecting? You don't listen all that often or maybe you listen every day? Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I'm actually, frankly, quite upset with myself because I filmed an entire episode of this with the microphone off and it was way better than what actually turned out here. But this is gonna have to do for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. And if you wanna catch up on Dear John, there's a playlist link coming in like two seconds. More Dear John episodes can be found in this playlist right here. Tap over here if you want to see my entire vinyl collection video. I really enjoyed that one, although it was a lot of work. So if you haven't seen it yet, then go check it out. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at ARTV Reviews. And other than that, I'll see you soon for more right here on Beyond ARTV.